here today to wrap up my February reading and to let you know what I will be reading for March. And just to keep this as organized as possible, I'm going to start off with my March TBR and, and then after that I will talk about what I read in February. There are a ton, I'm sure most of you on booktube know, of readathons and read-alongs going on in March and I am participating in three different things. So, um, as per usual, I'm continuing on with the Octavia E. Butler read-along and this uh, month we are reading Clay's Ark. And so this is book three in the Pattern Master series. Uh, and it's a little bit difficult to explain the plot, but uh, it is science fiction in case you're not familiar with Octavia e. Butler's work. And um, Clay's arc, Clay was introduced in Mind of My Mind as a character, and he um, was a part of the telepathic community um, that was featured in Mind of My Mind, but he kind of went off on his own and um, went back to this homestead type um, place in the desert that his brother had helped him set up uh, before he had fully come into his power. And so uh, I don't even really know what happens in Clay's arc. I purposefully don't really read the synopses of these stories before getting into them because I find them more enjoyable just to jump in uh, kind of blind. So. That will be one read-along that I'm participating in. Uh, the other two are connected. So I am going to be uh, doing the Irish Readathon, um, and the hosts for the Irish Readathon I will link below. Unfortunately, I only remember Elaine's name, um, but there's three different hosts, and so I will link their videos and channels down below. Um, there are prompts for this readathon on and it goes for the entire month of March. I don't remember all the prompts off the top of my head, but I know some of them are read nonfiction, uh, read a book with green on the cover, and read a book about mythology and Irish folklore and mythology. So this book fits those three prompts. Um, this is The Red-Haired Girl from the Bog, The Landscape of Celtic Myth and Spirit by Patricia Monaghan. And I've already read this book. This is a reread for me. Uh, the reason I am rereading it is because of my ongoing research into my new body of work, my new body of artwork. In case you're new here, I am an artist, a visual artist, and I do a lot of reading or that, that um, helps me to focus the artwork that I'm going to be making. And I read this book probably seven years ago and it was extremely inspirational to me and it prompted a lot of the um, content for this next body of work that I'm creating and so I want to reread this I want to go through kind of with a fine tooth comb um, and make sure that everything I need to pull from the text I have pulled and so the basic gist of this story is it's Patricia Monaghan herself um, who she grew up in Alaska and through her relationship with an Inuit elder um, who she thinks of like a grandfather she comes to the realization that she doesn't have a connection to the land of her ancestors and while she feels a connection to the land in Alaska because she grew up there, she wants to go to Ireland and connect with the place that her ancestors came from. And I think as settlers um, in North America, a lot of people who have come here um, and settled here have those types of sentiments about wherever they came from. Uh, if they know where they came from. And it certainly is a privilege um, to know where you came from specifically and be able to return there and connect with that place. So that's what this book is about. It also talks about a lot of the holy sites in Ireland and the folklore around those holy sites. And um, it is just a very inspirational, I would say it's a memoir um, style 
book. And so I'm really excited to get back into reading this again and to go through it again, like I said, with a fine tooth comb, underlining, pulling out more uh, research if I need to for the body of work I'm working on. Going hand in hand with that also for the Irish read Readathon is uh, The Rebels of Ireland, The Dublin Saga by Edward Rutherford. This is the second book in the Dublin Saga and I read that one which is called The Princess of Ireland quite a long time ago. I'd say at least 10 years ago. But luckily this, uh, I've already started reading it and there is a little, a little recap of what happens in The Princess of Ireland in the beginning. So this is fiction, um, but Edward Rutherford does extensive research before he writes these books. I have read, um, like I said, The Princess of Ireland, I've read Ruska, a novel of Russia, and I have read London um, by Edward Rutherford. And so he, you know, immerses himself in the places that he's writing about. He goes there, he talks with scholars, he tries to capture the essence of historical periods in a, in a place, and then he creates fictional stories around those um, places. And um, so he himself is not Irish, um, but this is most definitely about Ireland. And so this book is 896 pages, I believe, and so that qualifies as a marching mammoth. Um, March of the Mammoths is uh, hosted by Alex and Lukash and Jason, and I will link all of their information down below. And the basic premise of this readathon for March is to read a book that is over 800 pages. And when I was trying to think of what book I could read, um, I was looking through all the big books that I remembered on my list, and very few of them were actually over 800 pages. This one was. I think that reading these two together will be very good, and they will play off each other really well. And, um, you know, I am looking into Ireland specifically. I do have um, an Irish strain to my family. So my mother's father's side of the family are from Ireland. And so uh, I have history from th that part of the world and, and ancestry from that part of the world. And so the artwork that I'm researching is very much about that. So that's why I'm reading these. And then I'm also listening to I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell on audio. And that is her memoir. I believe the subtitle is 17 Brushes with Death. Uh, and Maggie O'Farrell is an Irish author. So those are the three books that I'm reading for the Irish Readathon and the book I'm reading for March of the Mammoths. And I have a couple more in there. <laughs> um, and, you know, I have no idea how much of this reading I'm actually going to be able to get done, but just understand that I will read it into April if need be. So um, the other books I'm reading, I actually forgot to bring one up here for research, are about labyrinths. And so this one is called Walking a Sacred Path, Rediscovering the Labyrinth as a Spiritual Practice by Lauren Artress. And I also have another one, um, which I'm going to be doing a separate video about the books about labyrinths and some labyrinth drawing I'm going to be doing. So you can look out for that. That is hopefully going to get read this month. I also got this, The Witches of Eastwick by John Ockdyke. It's kind of a long story. I have no idea if I'm actually going to like this book. Um, I found at a library sale years ago, The Widows of Eastwick by John Updike, which I knew would be the sequel to this one. I have watched the movie of this and I enjoyed it. And so I'm trying this out. Now, I've heard a lot of things about John Updike as a writer, and I am not super convinced that I'm going to like this book, but I thought this is the moment. I'm just going to get it out. I'm going to try it. And if I hate it, I'll just DNF it. So, and if I hate it, I will also get rid of The Widows of Eastwick, which has been on my shelf for years and years and years, and not feel very sad about that at all. So that's my plan there. <laughs> Um, I'm also going to be dipping in and out of A Moment's Liberty, The Shorter Diary of Virginia Woolf. Um, this, I have no f 
strict finish date on. I'm just going to be reading it um, in a leisurely pace and enjoying hearing Virginia's you know, personal thoughts as recorded in her diaries. This goes from 1917, I believe, until her, sorry, 1915 until her death. So, yeah, I will probably be making a separate video about this for my Bloomsbury Diaries um, series whenever I finish it, which will probably be in several months. I ended up reading seven books in February, which uh, was a bit of a surprise to me. The reason I squeezed in a seventh book, and literally I squeezed it in, was because I was participating in Dee Dee's Read So Lit Read Along, and I ordered this book January 13th, and it arrived on the Monday before the live show. So the live show was on Saturday, the book arrived on Monday. I had pretty much given up that I was going to get to read this book before the live show, uh, but luckily enough, uh, it got here and I thought, let's just try it out. Let's see if I can read this book in five days. And I did. Um, this is A More Perfect Union by Tammy Huff. This follows Henry, Sarah, and Maple. Um, Henry is from Ireland and he leaves Ireland hungry and poor, um, as so many Irish people did at that period. This is pre-Civil War in the United States. And he travels to the United States to try to make a fortune, make a life. He's lost all his family by the time he gets there. Um, Sarah is a slave in Virginia. And we meet her as she is being sold to a new family on the Jubilee Plantation. And Henry and Sarah meet because Henry is a traveling blacksmith. And they have a very unlikely love story. Um, Maple is another slave on the plantation and she is probably the most complex character in the book. Uh, I think she represents, you know, another side of the coin from Sarah's experience. Um, although, of course, any experience of slavery can is completely traumatizing, but Maple is very, very traumatized by what has happened to her and what is happening to her family, what's continuing to happen to her family. And she ends up playing a very instrumental role in the love story between Henry and Sarah. The reason that this book is, to me, the most interesting is because it is actually based on Tammy Huff's ancestors. Her great-great-grandparents did meet in this way, and so she took that story and fictionalized it in A More Perfect Union. It is a very, very flowing read despite, you know, the difficult subject matter. And it definitely has a lot of complexity and layers to it that I think are uh, really compelling. And so I would recommend this one. So also for Black History Month, I read The Black Unicorn Poems by Audre Lorde. I, um, there are some extremely powerful poems in this collection. Um, I think that Audre Lorde's poetry is very sophisticated. And so there were several poems in here that were, I think went over my head a bit, um, because they were, they seemed so personal to her experience, but that didn't mean I didn't enjoy them. I did. And I enjoyed a lot of her. She had a lot, has a lot of political poetry in here. She also has a lot of beautiful poetry about love relationships. Um, and so there's, there's, there's a little bit for everybody in here. So I, I definitely got a lot out of this and I will be, I have more Audrey Lord to read. So I'm excited to do that coming up in the future. Okay, so on audio, I listened to Shame on Me by Tessa McWatt. This is a memoir about, um, a memoir of, of race and belonging. And Tessa McWatt is a multiracial woman. Um, she was born in British Guyana. She grew up in Canada and now lives in London. And there were so many just stunning moments in this memoir. She's a beautiful writer. 
um, her way of com- compartmentalizing the story, uh, breaking it down into body parts, and how she shared, you know, general information about African history, and then um, her own life, and then you know, f- facts of of you know current issues all blended together. It was a, a very exceptionally well written memoir. I would highly, highly recommend it. I think it is um, just one of those books that can break open a lot of barriers that you might put around yourself because you think you can't understand someone else's experience. And I think she beautifully um, shows and shares her experience. And so, yeah, highly recommend that one too. Um... I finally read a Toni Morrison novel. I read The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. And um, I certainly understand why everyone loves her writing so much. Um, I thought that there was some really amazing layers of identity archaeology in this book. Um... I think that, for me, the way she wrote it, the, the structure was really interesting. Um, the, the journeys from the, for the different characters were really interesting. Um, I got This tends to happen to me when there's multiple characters in a book. I got a little bit stuck on Gloria, I believe, was the little girl's name who began narrating. And then when we moved to Pecola's experience, I got a little bit jarred. But there's some really precious, beautiful things that Toni Morrison shares here. I think my favorite part of the book was when Pecola started menstruating and the way the girls kind of held, you know, gathered around her and, and um, you know, made that moment beautiful um in this even though it was a really awkward and difficult moment at the same time so there, there's a lot of beautiful stuff in that book I will definitely continue reading Toni Morrison and and get into more of her work so uh I also read Old in Art School a memoir of starting over by Nell Painter for Black History Month that is about Nell Painter a very um you know prestigious historian who decides to go back to school and take art and become an artist. Uh, I did a full review on that book, so I will link that down below if you'd like to hear more about it. I think it's a really, really important memoir of a very specific type of experience that I don't think is written about very much, so I would highly recommend checking that one out. And I also read uh, Gathy Fox's uh, memoir, Apples. And she is a local artist, and I really enjoyed it. There are some really interesting moments in her life that um, were surprising to me, and it was very interesting to hear about her career development and, you know, how she's constructed her art career. So um, it's a very art-heavy um, series of books that I've read for February, and that is going to be continuing on, so hopefully you enjoy hearing about our books. Um, so yeah, that is what I read for the month of February. I hope that you all had a great reading month for February and that you are participating in some of these really fun read-alongs. I know there's a whole bunch more. There's Middle Grade March and a whole bunch of other read-alongs happening right now for March. So, um, let me know which ones you're participating in, in the comments and I will be back again soon with another video. Thanks for watching.